Hi, thanks for listening to Top Audiobooks. Remember to follow our channel here on the platform, and also our social media. We prepare a graphic of the book, with the author's key points and main ideas. Click that book graphic link in description now, and have access to an illustrated material with simple and easy steps, so you know everything about the book in minutes. You're listening to the book summary presentation of The Five Love Languages, How to Express Heartfelt Commitment to Your Mate by Dr. Gary Chapman, narrated by Larry G. Jones. The Big So What Many marriages fail not because couples don't put in the effort, but because they are expressing their love in the wrong ways. When you learn to understand and speak your spouse's love language, you will be able to effectively express your love and truly feel loved in return. Chapman's ideas have been expanded upon and developed by many other authors and famous personal development icons worldwide. Introduction Like linguistics in communication, people speak different love languages. We all have our native love languages that we speak and understand best in, and our secondary language or languages that we are comfortable with but less fluent at. It is possible for couples to love each other, but to feel unloved because they give and receive love differently. That is, they don't share the same primary emotional love language. After 30 years of marriage counseling, Chapman concluded that there are five key emotional love languages, though there are also many dialects within each of these five languages. All of us have an emotional love tank. When we receive love in our primary love language, our love tank is filled and we feel loved. When we don't receive love expressed in our primary love language, our love tank gradually depletes and we feel unloved. When our love tank is empty, we start to have issues in our relationship. Let's take a look at the phenomenon of falling in love. When we fall in love, we feel euphoric. We have the illusion that our partners are perfect and that the romantic feelings in our relationship will last forever. During this in-love period, we feel altruistic towards each other. We give freely because we believe our lover feels the same about us and are equally committed to meet our needs. Long-range studies show that the in-love phenomenon typically lasts about two years or longer if it is a secret love affair. When the phase eventually passes, we start to assert ourselves and we stop doing many of the altruistic things for our partners. Our differences start to surface and our partner's imperfections start to become irritating or annoying. As the love tanks start to deplete, relationship issues start to surface. To have a lasting relationship, it is important to recognize that the emotional high of the in-love experience is only temporary in nature. After the phase has run its course, we need to make a conscious shift to real love. Unlike the in-love stage, real love involves a few elements. First, a conscious choice or an act of will to love the other person. Second, effort and discipline to understand and give love to the other person, not merely driven by the euphoria of being in love. And third, a focus on the growth and development of yourself and your partner. Unlike the in-love phase when we simply see the other party as perfect and hope they will stay that way. Remember, we can choose to learn and speak our spouse's primary love language. When their love tanks are full, they are in a better position to reciprocate your love and are free to grow to their full potential. Now, let's take a closer look at each of the five love languages. Love language number one, words of affirmation. Words of affirmation are words that build someone up. If this is your primary love language, it means the world to you when you receive unsolicited compliments. Hear the words, I love you, and the reasons behind that love. Insults can break your heart and leave lasting scars. Here are some ways to express love through words of affirmation. First, 
through verbal compliments. Sincere compliments can help your spouse to feel valued and appreciated. Some examples are, You look beautiful today. You look great in that suit. I really love your cooking. Second, use encouraging words. Your spouse may have areas of insecurity or untapped potential. Your words of encouragement inspire courage and can be an important catalyst to help your spouse to take action to develop his or her full potential. Encouraging words can take many forms, including 1. Kind words, expressed in a loving tone of voice. This includes making a commitment to forgive each other for past mistakes and living each day free from the failures of yesterday. 2. Humble words, that is, making humble requests, not demands of each other. Recognize that we are equal adult partners in marriage. When we make requests of our spouse, we affirm them of their abilities and their worth to us. And when we make demands, we are belittling them. 3. Other words of affirmation dialects, such as written words of affirmation, sharing the credit for your accomplishments with your spouse, or indirect words of affirmation, like praising your spouse when he or she is not around, or praising your spouse in front of others. Love language number two, quality time. If this is your primary language, you deeply value doing things together and receiving full, undivided attention from your spouse, including sharing quality conversations and activities, distractions, postponed dates, or not being listened to can especially be hurtful to you. Here are some ways to express love through quality time. First, quality conversations, which involves sharing experiences, thoughts, feelings, desires, etc. in a friendly and uninterrupted way. If this feels uncomfortable for you, here are some practical tips to get you started. 1. Listen sympathetically and wholeheartedly. To be a better listener, give your full attention, maintain eye contact, focus on listening, and don't do anything else during the conversation. Have a true desire to understand your spouse's thoughts, feelings, and desires. You can listen for feelings, observe body language, and seek clarification if necessary to know what he or she is really thinking and feeling. And don't ever interrupt. 2. Learn to talk and express your feelings. Self-revelation is not easy for many of us who grew up in homes where we are discouraged from expressing our thoughts and feelings, especially negative ones, and we may have grown to deny our feelings over time. Start by writing down your feelings associated with events away from home. For example, no promotion, feeling disappointed. Long cue, feeling frustrated. Communicate these events and feelings briefly with your spouse until you start to feel comfortable discussing your emotions about events within the home, too. Hi, thanks for listening to Top Audiobooks. Remember to follow our channel here on the platform and also our social media. We prepare a graphic of the book with the author's key points and main ideas. Click that book graphic link in description now and have access to an illustrated material with simple and easy steps so you know everything about the book in minutes. Three, establish new patterns of sharing. Our natural inclination to share or not share may be influenced by our personality types, but anyone can learn new communication patterns. To learn new patterns of sharing, set a daily sharing time in which each person will talk about three things that happened in the day and how you feel about them. The second form of quality time could be quality activities, which can be anything in which either or both party has an interest in. The activity itself is less important than the objective of expressing love by being together. This may involve giving up some of your individual activities, but will go a long way to fill your spouse's love tank. Love language number three, receiving gifts. 
gifts are visual symbols of love. If this is your primary language, you deeply treasure a gift or gesture that shows that you are being thought of, cared for, and prized above whatever was sacrificed to bring you the gift. You feel hurt by the absence of daily gestures, a missed birthday, anniversary, or a hasty thoughtless gift. Gifts can be purchased, found, or made. The value is often less important than the significance of the gift. If you are not intuitive at giving gifts, but your spouse's primary language is receiving gifts, you can start by making a list of all the gifts that your spouse has been excited about. This will give you an idea of what gifts he or she appreciates. Here are some tips and ways to express love through gifts. First, have the right perspective on gifts and money. If you have a saving and investing mentality, you may feel reluctant to spend money on gifts. Learn to view it as an investment in your spouse and relationship. Second, the gift of self or the gift of physical presence becomes especially critical in times of crisis if your spouse's primary love language is receiving gifts. If you are on the receiving end and want your spouse to be present physically, verbalize it rather than expect your spouse to read your mind. Love language number four, acts of service. If this is your primary love language, you feel loved when your spouse says, let me do that for you, and helps to ease your burdens or share your responsibilities, be it cooking a meal or washing the car broken commitments, unwillingness to help, laziness, sloppiness, or taking your spouse for granted all send the message that your spouse doesn't matter. Even if you and your spouse share the same primary love language of acts of service, you may speak different dialects or value different types of support being rendered. Try asking your spouse to write down the task that he or she considers the most important and do them. We should remember that our perspectives and stereotypes of male and female roles in society or the household may not be shared by our spouse. Hence, it's always better to make requests rather than demands. No spouse should ever feel compelled to do something for the other due to guilt or fear. Love language number five, physical touch. Physical touch can bring a sense of security and connection to any relationship. If this is your primary love language, you crave shows of care and love through thoughtful touches, hugs, kisses, pats on the back, and or sexual intercourse. Neglect or abuse can cause serious damage and hurt to you emotionally. Like other love languages, there are different dialects in physical touch, such as loving touches on the arm, back or shoulders, a back rub, sexual foreplay, and intercourse sitting closely on the couch, holding hands, etc. Get feedback from your spouse to find out what he or she finds loving and pleasurable. Even if you share the same love language of physical touch, don't assume he or she speaks the same dialect as you. While physical abuse is inappropriate for any society or love language, it has an amplified impact for someone whose primary love language is physical touch. For example, a slap in the face or a spouse's infidelity can cause massive damage emotionally, especially to someone whose love is expressed by physical touch. If your spouse's primary love language is physical touch, it is extremely powerful to hold him or her when he or she is crying, and especially during crisis. On the contrary, the failure to touch could communicate indifference and leave a deep scar. We've just covered the five love languages words of affirmation, quality time, receiving gifts, acts of service, and physical touch. To discover your primary language, ask yourself, 1. What makes you feel most loved by your spouse? What do you desire the most from your spouse? 2. What does your spouse fail to do or say that hurts you deeply or brings you the deepest pain? 3. What do you do to express love to your spouse? You tend to do what you wish he or she would do for you.
Next up, the tank check game is a useful game to develop your understanding of and stimulate the love expressions in your relationship. 1. Write down what you think is your primary love language, then list the other four in order of importance. Also write down what you think is the primary love language of your spouse. 2. Sit down and discuss your list. 3. For three times a week, for three weeks, do a tank check. Ask, on a scale of 0 to 10, how is your love tank tonight? Then ask, what could I do to help fill it? Finally, do what your spouse requests to the best of your ability. The top requests in your tank check game are likely to cluster around your primary love language. One of Chapman's key messages in his book is this. Love is a choice. We all come down from the emotional high of the in love experience at some point. Most marriages fail because people have not learnt or chosen to speak the primary love language of the other party. Making a conscious choice and a deliberate effort to speak our spouse's primary love language may not come naturally for us, but it helps to keep his or her love tank full, and chances are that he or she will reciprocate and speak our language. Love gives us the security, sense of significance, and self-worth and energy to develop our potential. Now, what if you and your spouse's love tank have been empty for very long and you feel like you need a miracle to turn things around? Consider this approach. 1. Tell your spouse that you have been thinking about your marriage and want to do a better job of meeting his or her needs. 2. Ask for suggestions on how you could improve and be open to the feedback. 3. If he or she has no suggestions, guess the primary love language based on the things that he or she has been complaining about. 4. Focus on speaking that love language for six months and ask for feedback at the end of each month. 5. Each time your spouse indicates that he or she is seeing improvement, wait for one week before making a specific request of what you'd like him or her to do for you. Love Languages and Children The five love languages apply to children, too. When children are little, we should pour all five love languages on them. As they grow up, observe their behavior to learn their primary language. Let's go through each love language briefly in relation to children. First, words of affirmation. We usually lavish young children with loving words and praises, but start to make demands and criticisms as they grow older. For a child whose primary love language is words of affirmation, such negative words could leave a long-lasting impact on their sense of self-worth and self-esteem. Instead, commend them for their successes and achievements. Second, quality time. If your children's primary language is quality time, it is especially important for you to get involved in their areas of interest and give them undivided attention in their younger years. Otherwise, they will probably not allow you to spend time with them in their adolescent years. Third, receiving gifts. If your child's primary love language is receiving gifts, he or she is likely to take care of the gifts, display them prominently, and play them often. Observe what they value most and express your love through those gifts. Fourth, acts of service. If your child often expresses appreciation for small acts of service that you do for him or her, and he or she consistently offers to help you with projects and tasks, this is likely to be the primary language. Finally, physical touch. It is natural to hold and hug young children. As they grow up, don't withdraw such acts of affection. Remember that physical punishments can be especially hurtful emotionally to children with this love language. Other useful details in the book to look out for. Chapman used many real-life examples from his own marriage and of couples that he had counseled across the years 
to illustrate the concept in his book and show how they can be applied to address different marriage or relationship issues and circumstances. These case studies help us to identify similarities and lessons for our own relationships. In the book, he also offers two pages of additional ideas and suggestions for each of the five love languages as well as separate love languages profile surveys for husbands and wives to identify your primary love language. More resources, including free online profiling surveys, are available at www.5lovelanguages.com. If you like the tips and ideas in this summary, do pick up a copy of the book for more details. We hope you've enjoyed this book summary presentation of The Five Love Languages, How to Express Heartfelt Commitment to Your Mate by Dr. Gary Chapman, read by Larry G. Jones. Hi, thanks for listening to Top Audiobooks. Remember to follow our channel here on the platform, and also our social media. We prepare a graphic of the book, with the author's key points and main ideas. Click that book graphic link in description now, and have access to an illustrated material with simple and easy steps, so you know everything about the book in minutes.